Hello everyone, my name is Jason and welcome to the very first episode of the Hashkey Learn video series where we speak to different experts in the crypto industry to understand a bit more about various areas in the digital asset sector. Now today I'm joined by my colleague Henry Santiero, Senior Research Manager at Hashkey Capital. Now Henry recently published a report called Privacy Networks, the Future of Smart Contract Platforms. If you're watching this on our website or on YouTube, you can find the link in our description below where you can view and download the full reports. Now, Henry, let's dive straight into it, right? Um, I guess we can first address the elephant in the room. What exactly are privacy smart contract networks? Right. Jason, thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, let's have this fascinating discussion about privacy Absolutely. smart contract networks. <clears throat> so what are they? So nowadays, it's very hard to achieve privacy on the blockchain. Traditionally, with most blockchain applications that are private nowadays, they are also permissionless. For example, if you have blockchain applications for the financial industry, for insurance, they usually use technologies like Hyperledger Fabric, Corda, Quorum, uh, Enterprise Ethereum, and these blockchain networks, these consortiums, they can build the blockchains in order to be, uh, in order to have just a small number of nodes participating on that network. So mm. it's permissionless. They know who are the participants. Now, the challenge is how to have privacy in a decentralized permissionless network, how to make uh, a blockchain that is decentralized where anyone can join and be a validator or a miner, right. anyone can validate transactions, but n do not see the transactions. Yep. This is this is a big uh, cryptography challenge, and this is what these blockchains that we are going to talk about uh, solve. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and so on, all the transactions are visible to everyone. Mm. All your assets will be visible to the rest of the world. Uh, and the other networks that we are going to discuss today yep. challenge that uh, solve that issue and allow to have a privacy level while keeping it also secure and decentralized. Now, I guess most of our viewers want to understand is that from a technical point of view, you know, how exactly do these privacy smart contract networks work? You know, how how can they actually preserve privacy? What kind of privacy enabled mechanisms do they adopt? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. The uh, networks that we have looked at, they mainly use three different technologies. TEE, Trusted Execution Environments. They use ZK SNARKs and Zero Knowledge Proofs. And they use homomorphic encryption. So trusted uh, execution environments yeah. and then zero knowledge proofs as well as homomorphic encryption. Yeah. So three methods. Exactly. Okay. And all these three are very fascinating and it's very, very cool to see these teams developing these very strong encryption mechanisms, mm -hmm. but they all work in very different ways. Okay. So uh, trusted execution environments are used by the secret network, Oasis and Fallen. Okay. And what are TEEs, trusted execution environments? So basically, we use this technology every day. You know, when you unlock your phone with your fingerprint, you are using a trusted execution environment inside the the, the, the processor of your phone. Mm -hmm. And the way it works is your phone, let's say you are unlocking an app, yep. but the app doesn't know your fingerprint. Your phone is, the, the, the chip of your phone is going to say to the app, this is the right fingerprint, mm -hmm. but it's not going to show your fingerprint to the app. Right. Uh, so this is basically how a TEE work. You okay. can prove that you have some data without actually showing the data because the data is processed inside a computer chip that is specialized to process data without showing the data to the operating system or to the application. Okay. So, so I guess TEE isn't specifically reserved or it it doesn't specifically exist in the world of crypto, right? It's kind of used in, you know, daily applications, you know, used in our phones, you know, daily life uh, gadgets, right? Exactly. And, yeah. and tell me more about zero knowledge proofs. Yeah. Zero knowledge proofs are, for example, used by Horizon, is one of these networks that okay. we have been studying. And zero knowledge proofs is like how to prove that you know something 
without telling me that data. Right. Right. Okay. And basically, I will challenge you to do something, or as a validator, as a node, I will challenge you to um, to do something in order to prove that you know the data without yeah. showing me the data. Mm -hmm. So we have that door over there, right? And how can you? And you have the 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 door codes. Yeah. And you want to prove me that you have the door codes without showing me the door codes. So the way to do it is to solve a challenge. Leave leave the room, right? Open mm -hmm. the door. Yeah. So if you open the door. You prove me that you have the door codes without showing me the door codes. So that's kind of in a nutshell how uh, zero knowledge proofs uh, work. OK. And the final method is homomorphic encryption. Homomorphic encryption. So yeah. how does that work? How does that differ from you know the, the, the previous two methods? Yeah, uh, homomorphic encryption is a very well studied uh, encryption mechanism that basically encrypts the data in a different way mm -hmm. so that while the data is encrypted, the uh, the software can still process the data yep. without knowing exactly what's the data. So, so Henry, you've briefly mentioned about these privacy networks already, but let me just quickly recap them. So in the order of market cap as of today, there is Oasis Network, Secret, Horizon, Darrow, and Fala. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah okay, that's awesome. Right. Now, um, in the interest of time, uh, we wouldn't go into super detail of what these networks are because you've given us a very, very detailed analysis of everything in the report. So for those interested, you can click into the link in the description below and download the report. But maybe perhaps you can give us a quick summary of what each of these uh, networks do and you know what are some of the highlights that you found. So maybe we can start with Oasis Network. Yeah, sure. And uh, let me just grab my notes to make oh, sure, sure that okay. I'm accurate. But uh, OK, so Oasis Network and Secret, mm -hmm. they are part both of the Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, and they both use the Cosmos SDK. Yeah. But starting with Oasis, so Oasis is at the moment the one with the highest market cap, at least as of today. The crypto market has been fluctuating a lot mm -hmm. lately, exactly. but I think the Oasis network is the one with the with the biggest market cap. Okay. They also have an interesting adoption in terms of DeFi ecosystem. There are a few DEXs and also one lending protocol using uh, the Oasis network. Mm. And they also have a very uh, developed university program. They have partnerships with many different universities, a very uh, dynamic um, uh, ecosystem, yep. and uh, the, the community is very active. In terms of technologies that we have uh, talked about, TEEs, zero knowledge proofs, and anomorphic en encryption, uh, Oasis used TEE, Stress mm -hmm. of Execution Environments, and it's a highly modular uh, blockchain, meaning that developers can develop their own Oasis networks like side chains mm -hmm. to connect to the main chain according to your uh, needs. Cool. The privacy is not yet enabled. Mm -hmm. They are doing the, the, the tests on the test net. Uh, so you can use the Oasis network, but not yet with a privacy net, uh, layer, but should be also ready very soon. And they have potentially a partnership with Meta coming sometime oh, soon. Okay. They have been talking cool, a cool. lot about it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's formalized, but still uh, an interesting announcement if, if yeah, it we'll actually see. materializes. And comparing to Oasis network, I guess Secret Network is probably the closest to to it in terms of you know the development stage and you know having their own ecosystem right mm -hmm. and as you mentioned before hashkey capital is a is an investor of secret network yes so the secret network we see the secret network as the biggest network in terms of developer community yep. the developer community is extremely active okay and the secret network the developer documentation is extremely easy uh, and uh, is very detailed uh, I'm not a developer, but I managed, for example, to deploy a smart contract on the secret network in like 10 minutes. You, anyone can do it, oh, okay. which is good. Like when we study a, a, a blockchain, we like to go and be a bit hands on to check how easy it is. Yep. And among these networks, the secret network is really the easiest one to deploy a smart contract. You can do it in five minutes. Oh, OK. They have a big developer ecosystem uh -huh. and they have a big developer ecosystem fund, which was uh, where uh, actually Hashkey Capital participated, right. meaning that they have a lot of money to provide grants to mm -hmm. projects that want to develop 
on on the secret network. So if you have a project and you actually want to develop your project eventually using the secret network, you can apply for a grant mm. and receive uh, an incentive to to develop. Got it. Okay. And um, comparing to Oasis and Secret, I guess Horizon, Fala, and Dero is still at a pretty early stage of development. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, they, they are a bit early stage. So Secret and Oasis, uh, the Secret Network, for example, there is big community. You have tons of NFT use cases. Mm -hmm. You have a few DeFi applications yep. with TVL. Uh, Horizon, Fala, and Dero are a little bit behind. But let me start with Horizon. Okay. Uh, Horizon. Uh, so they, it's a uh, uh, they use proof of work. So the secret in the ways is we have been talking about they use proof of stake. Proof of stake. Okay. Uh, the tender mint uh, consensus mechanism, which mm -hmm. is one of the consensus mechanisms used by the Cosmos uh, ecosystem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Horizon is not Cosmos ecosystem. They use proof of work and uh, zero knowledge proofs to keep the privacy layer. There is one, one interesting data about Horizon. Uh, although the uh, DeFi ecosystem is not yet developed on the Horizon network, mm -hmm. it is the most decentralized network right after the Ethereum beacon chain. Oh, really? So okay. Horizon has, if I'm not wrong, 35,000, close to 35,000 validators, mm -hmm. which makes it even more decentralized than uh, the Bitcoin blockchain, for example, which we usually use as a good ben benchmark yeah, yeah, yeah. of decentralization. Okay, so, so the next one is Dero Network. What's, mm -hmm. what's so special about Dero? Yeah, what's so special about Dero is that it's the only blockchain, at least as far as we know, that uses homomorphic encryption. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the encryption and cryptography mechanisms developed by Dero are very, very sophisticated. And so it's not as easy to understand as the one on secret network, right? So it's hard to maybe not as easy, and okay. which may eventually scare away some developers. Okay. But it's they architected zero in a very very smart way. Uh, the team is anonymous, so nobody knows actually who is the team behind mm -hmm. zero. Okay. But I'm sure they are pretty smart guys. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I can assume. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the last one is Fala Network. So 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 tell us a bit more about Fala. Yeah, so Fala is uh, also a network that aims to be not only a smart contract blockchain, but their goal is actually to be a decentralized cloud. You mm -hmm. know, you have like AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, yep. uh, IBM Cloud. Fala, the goal is to be a decentralized cloud computing platform with a privacy layer. Okay. So they also use TEEs, Trusted Execution Environments. Mm -hmm. And imagine you can um use your computer as a, a working node on the Fala network to process data to process smart contracts but your computer is not going to see the data that is processing yep. basically or not you, your computer keep sees the data but the rest of your computer doesn't see that's how mm -hmm. the TEEs work and Fala, Fala is also a very interesting chain but in terms of adoption is also still in the early stages. Okay. Now let's kind of step back a bit and look at the bigger picture. You know, um, in your report, you do mention that uh, more people in the community are kind of more like they like they start to understand and realize the potential and the importance of privacy smart contract networks. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think all of these coins, in terms of market cap, um, they're probably not you know on the same level as you know the likes of Ethereum yet. So, what do you think is the challenge or the main obstacle that they need to overcome in order to be scaled at a much bigger level? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think they need to attract more developers, okay. attract more community, because uh, I believe that really one of these networks that we have been talking about is going to be one of the uh, top 10 uh, smart contract blockchains out there. But uh, the, the market cap, like you said, is still very, very small. Yep. I think Oasis at the moment, like $500 million, Secret Network, like $200 or $300 million dollars while if you look at uh top 10 by market cap is uh they are still uh 50x away yeah. from from the top 10 which is positive because it means that we may eventually have a good opportunity there a good market opportunity uh considering that yeah privacy is important and more we move to web3 the more we have our lives on the internet, 
uh, on the Internet of Assets, which is mm -hmm. Web3, yep. the more important is to have a privacy layer. Now, Henry, I understand you are currently also writing some other reports. Can you give us a quick sneak peek of uh, what else are you looking into right now? Sure, we are just uh, finishing or about to finish an Ethereum report. Okay. These are very exciting times for the Ethereum network because of the upcoming upgrades. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ethereum is moving to proof of stake sometime soon before the end of the year. Uh, the merge is going to happen. We call merge to the, uh, to the uh, upgrade where uh, Ethereum is going to become fully proof of stake. And next year is also going to upgrade in terms of scalability is going to be improved with the shard chains. Mm -hmm. So these are very exciting times for the Ethereum network, and we decided to make a report about it. Uh, and we are also working about a Cosmos report, Cosmos okay. ecosystem, okay. Mm -hmm. because we already uh, made some research around the Cosmos network yep. because of o Oasis and Secret Network, and we decided to also do a Cosmos network uh, report. So keep tuned. Awesome. Well, we look forward to reading those reports and perhaps after they are published, we can have another discussion on Ethereum and the Cosmos ecosystem as well. Well, again, thank you so much, Henry, for the discussion around privacy smart contract networks today. It's been really helpful. Uh, hopefully you guys have understood a little bit more about these five different networks and what are their use cases and why it is important to understand you know, the, the, the benefits of privacy smart contract networks towards the development of Web3. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and then we'll see you next time. Thank you.